Hi, Per Bristow here, and welcome to Sing with Freedom, because that is, after all, what it's all about, to be able to experience that sense of freedom, whether we sing by ourselves just for the fun of it, or if you sing in a band or in a choir, or if you are on stage in front of thousands of people, to be able to go up there with confidence and freedom and really be able to sing the way you want to sing. And that is, of course, not so easy to do if we feel restricted some way. So if you feel strain or pain or you don't have the range that you would like to have or you simply don't sound as good as you would like to sound, then of course we feel held back, we feel restricted, right? So this program is about releasing that so that you can really enjoy singing on a much greater level than before at what level you are at. So we're going to work a lot on the physical aspects of the voice so you get a functional, healthy voice. You know what to do on a bad day, uh, how you can sing for hours without necessarily getting tired, getting more strength, power, range, all these kind of things, right? But it really is all about releasing you, releasing your inner voice in a sense so that, again, you can enjoy singing more you become more effective, you become a greater contributor to your band or your choir or your group, whatever you sing, whoever you sing with. And also, so if you perform, you actually become more influential, you become more inspiring, you have more fun, you can create that bond with an audience, you become more spontaneous, you feel more alive, and ultimately you become much more successful. So how are we going to accomplish this? Well, let's establish my two golden rules first. So rule number one I have is that it doesn't matter what it sounds like. And I know that's a strange thing to be saying because after all you are here because you want to sound good. But it really is a very, very important concept, very important mindset. We need to take the pressure off of ourselves, take that judgment off of ourselves. We don't want to be judged by others. We don't want to be judging ourselves so that therefore we can actually experience something that is really profound, something that you may not have ever experienced before, even though you might have been singing for decades in the past. Very, very important. And you'll see when we go along here, you're going to see how that applies and why I say that and why it's so important. The second rule is this. You need to do with me. We don't learn, we don't become better by just watching videos and just thinking about it, right? This is about exper experiential learning. I'm going to lead you through exercises, some experiments, and it's by doing them you're going to make some discoveries that you may not have ever discovered before. We're going to tap into a deeper awareness of what's going on inside of you so that you therefore can release restrictions, tension, whatever it is, and develop functionality and strength and so forth. Very important. And the way I set this up is that you don't have to do it with me all the time. You don't have to watch the videos over and over again, but you'll know what to do and then you go off by yourself and do it by yourself. And every day you're going to discover something new. You're going to discover something new because of what you did the previous day, right? So the results you get are in direct relation to uh, your level of engagement. Although when I say level of engagement, it's not necessarily the amount we spend. It's not that you have to spend a lot of time. It has to do again with the focus, the awareness, what you discover when you do an exercise. We're going to do a lot of exercises. We're going to do some experiments. Sometimes I'm going to be standing. Sometimes I'm going to be sitting because I have a keyboard here in front of me. I've chosen to do that so I can really focus on you rather than sit at an angle at the piano there. So we feel that it's just you and me in a room, right? It's just, we're just having fun. And therefore, it's important that you have your environment. So if you know that people can hear you and you feel uncomfortable about that, or change your environment, or go and tell those people that, hey, I'm going to make some sound now. It's not about sounding good. So that they understand. So that they don't judge. And that you feel comfortable not being judged. And that includes that you are not going to judge yourself, right? Okay? So if you're not in that environment now, just take a break, pause this video, and then come back when you are, and we'll get going. And if you are, let's get going. All right. So let's start off by saying, ah, yes. Did you do it? Let's do it again. I'll do first. Ah, and then you do it. 
Good. Now, how does that feel? May feel kind of strange, weird, uncomfortable, ah, saying, ah, right? Okay, good, fine. That's called awareness. So now with that awareness, let's just move around a little bit and then make, us, make ourselves feel good. It, it does feel good, especially when we don't care what it sounds like, right? Nobody's watching. We just do it because it feels good. Ah, you do it. Yes. Let's do it one more time. Move a little bit now. Ah. Right? We're having fun already. How about that? So when we make a sound like that, what is going on inside of us? How can we make a sound? Well, we have these things inside of here that are known as vocal cords, also known as vocal folds. And what do they look like? What's, have you seen them? Pretty fascinating. So this thing on guys, we call it the Adam's apple. It's the thyroid cartilage. Inside of there, we have the voice box. And inside of there, we have the vocal cords or the vocal folds. And when, my, when I breathe, they're open like this. And they look like this, but on a horizontal level, V-shaped like this. But they're open and the air passes through, therefore no sound. When I say, Ah, they come together and they vibrate. And that vibration is what we experience as sound. Amazing, right? And yet you've been able to do it from day one. However, sometimes dysfunctions happen and things don't operate the way they could. So you're going to get very good at making this operating in a functional, healthy way and also so we can access some muscles here and make it stronger, sing those high notes and all these kind of things. So first, just breathe, exhale, just like that, right, no sound. And then say, ah, you made sound, amazing. Do it one more time now and try to feel what is going on inside of there. What is it that you are actually able to regulate in order to create that sound. Something is moving inside of there. So let's just do the air first. Good. Feel it. And then, ah. Right. And you obviously feel some kind of vibration inside of there. That's the result of the sound. But what is it that's moving in order to create the sound? Well, we're going to discover this as we go along. So when the chords come together, I call that connected. Technically, it's called that the chords adduct and the abduct. I use the word connected. So this would be breathy. Ah, would be connected, more connected. Now, we could also do all kinds of things in between, right? So if I make a little bit of a sound, ah, now that's a breathy sound kind of a whispery sound. And many times that does not feel so comfortable to do. But try it anyway. So you can hear that there's a little bit of vibration there, right? Not a whole lot. So the chords are coming together a little bit, but not a whole lot. But try to make that sound ah, a breathy sound, right? And now connect it again. Ah, good. Is it the tongue that makes that happen? No. Is it the jaw? No. Is it the neck? No. What is it? Something inside of there. Breathy sound. One more time. Ah. Good. And now connect it again. Ah. Fabulous. All right. So I'm going to sit by the keyboard now and we're going to do some amazing experiments. All right, so experiment one is this. I'm going to play a note. Let's just pick this note. And again, it's not really that the note is important, but we'll just pick one for fun. So here it is. You're going to sing this note on an A ah as long as you can, and we're going to do it twice. Once super soft, and once pretty out there, pretty loud. And your task is to keep it going for as long as you can. Okay, are you ready? So let's start with the soft one first. 
super soft on this note, on an A, ah, for as long as you can. I'm going to count to four and then you start. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Okay, so now let's do it loud. What is loud? This is not about screaming, but comfortably loud. Just say it once so you just feel. What's loud to you? Ah, let it out. Okay, all right, so here we go. As long as you can. One, two, three, four, go. Good, keep it going. Keep it loud. Keep it loud. Keep going. Are you done? <laughs> All right. What do I know? How long you were able to sustain those notes, right? Here's the question. Which one was the longest one? Hmm. Well, here's the thing. For most people, the loud one is the longest one. And isn't that strange? Probably that was the case for you. If that was not the case for you, then you'll know why soon. And if you want to try it again, just, uh, just go back, rewind this video and do it again. Um, so why is the long one almost the, I mean, the loud one almost always the longest one? Very strange. Wouldn't we think that we need more air to, to uh, make it loud? So therefore, that would be tougher to sustain it longer, right? But why is that? Well, based on what we talked about previously, what do you think? That's right, because when we sing soft, the vocal cords tend to go breathy. Now, I didn't say sing breathy. I said sing softly, right? But I tricked you maybe because I counted in a breathy voice. One, two, three, four. So maybe that tricked you into making it breathy also. But most of the time when we do it soft, it tends to go breathy. It doesn't have to be that, but it's actually skillful not to be able to do it breathy. So let's now on purpose do it breathy, so ah, like that, all right? And keep it going for as long as you can. Here we go. One, two, three, four. And keep it breathy. Right? And now again, do it pretty loud. Here we go. One, two, three, four. loud. Yes, it's easy, right? Why? Because when we do it loud, the chords kind of have to come together. If they don't, we have a serious problem. We're going to start coughing, right? I can't be breathy ah, and try to be loud. Oh, that's not going to feel good. So the vocal chords tend to come together when we do it loudly. That's not necessarily, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm telling you to, to be loud all the time. Absolutely not. We want to have dynamics. But I'm just showing you an example. Now, when you went breathy, the air then escaped, right? So now do like this, and let's not do no, no note whatsoever. Just do, ah, uh, and on the same exhale, you suddenly open up the chords. Try that. Right. Ah, uh, right. So you, again, have this ability to open up the muscle. What happens with the breathing? What happens with the air? It all escapes, right? Of course it does. And it doesn't matter how many years you've done breathing exercises. If you open the door, the air is gone. Hmm, interesting. Do you think that has something to do with how long we can sustain phrases and notes and sentences, right? 
of course. So, try to come back now on the same exhale. Ah, ah. Good. Again. Ah, ah. Yes. That may not be so easy. Ah, ah. Good. Right. Again, what is it that makes that happen? Is it the tongue that does that? Hmm. Feel it again. Do it again and feel that the tongue is doing absolutely nothing. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, which is easier said than done. Now let's do it on this note. Here we go. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, you go. And. Right? Good. Yes. Good. Now, without coming back, just feel that you're opening the chord suddenly. Uh, and you feel that all the air escapes. Here we go. Three, four. Right. Oh, you're going to get good at this. This is so important. The better you become, you get at this, you can sing in a different style. Sometimes it's cool to sing breathy, but if breathy is all you can do, you're very limited. If you, your voice tends to be very breathy, then you can't project. Makes sense, right? You're going to have to breathe more often. You have less dynamics, and frankly, you probably have less range. On the other hand, some people have the other uh, condition, if you will, the tendency that the chords come together very well, but unnecessarily harsh, harshly. So if I do, uh, if I talk like this, hello, now my chords are coming together. If this is how I sing, uh, now it sounds like I'm holding my breath, right? But it's not because I'm holding my breath, it's because this is so con con uh, constricted, contracted, so everything is compressed. We're not letting it out. Make sense? This is going to make you not sing on pitch. Breathiness can be very hard to sing on pitch, but also if you have a squeezed voice like that, you're not going to sing on pitch. And you're not going to have the range. You're not going to have the dynamics. And you're probably not going to have the influence on your audience. So I'm going to show you examples later on why this is so important, and you're going to recognize this. So for now, recognize what was difficult for you. If it was difficult for you to do breathy, ah, maybe this happened. Ah, and it was hard to do. Okay, awareness. It's okay. We accept that that is the case right now, but you're becoming aware of it. right? If the tendency is that ah, you are breathy and you have a hard time ah, connecting the chords, that there wasn't much difference between breathy and connected, okay, then you recognize that. You know what to work on, right? Isn't that interesting? So now we're going to go to experiment number two. So experiment two is you're going to sing this note again. You're going to let it out, so hopefully it becomes pretty connected. Uh, it doesn't have to be super long this time. But while you, uh, while you sing this ah, you're going to move your head, and we're going to see what happens. Okay? Are you ready? So you're going to move your head in a comfortable way. If you have neck issues, you know, you know, you take it easy. But you want to make it feel good, frankly, and moving your head probably does feel kind of good if it's nice and gentle. So do that while you're singing this long ah. Here we go. I'll count to four. One, two, three, four. Good. Move. All right. So what happened to the note? What happened to the pitch? Did it do like this? Ah, 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 of course not. The note doesn't change because you move your head, right? You noticed that. You already knew that. But why not? Because the vocal cords are doing their thing, and all these other things have nothing to do with the vocal cord vibration. Isn't that good news? Now, this might have happened that you had a little bit of a 
crack or something. Uh, maybe something like that happened. Well, guess what? That might have been good news because if I look like this, I look tight, what's it going to sound like, do you think? Well, you know what it's going to sound like. Uh, it's going to sound very restricted, very tight, right? If I move, uh, it actually helps the vocal cords because the other muscles release. See, the vocal cords are so brilliant at what they're designed to do. Come together and vibrate if we let them. But see, that's the problem, because there are so many other muscles in this area, swallowing muscles, the, the tongue, the jaw, the neck, the throat, and they all want to help, and that's so nice of them, but we rather they don't. So we're going to train those surrounding muscles to let go so the vocal cords can vibrate freer and freer. Yes. So let's use movement as our friend here. I'm going to do first. You're going to copy me. Copy my attitude, if you will. So, I'll do first. Ah, you go, and... Yes, move. Ah, yeah. Oh, yes. care what it sounds like. No, we don't. And that's exactly why we can actually allow ourselves to feel good. Rather be concerned if we're on pitch or if we look good or whatever, right? It's just you and I in the room here so we can look as silly as we want. It's fun, all right? So what's the tongue doing when you do that? Check it. Feel it. Here we go. I'll do first. Ah, good. You go. Feel what the tongue is doing. What was the tongue doing? Nothing. Good answer. Yes, let's feel that. That is, it's how heavy I, I can't talk, right? That's how heavy it is. Just allow it to collapse, to surrender. That is not even participating in this. Here we go. Uh, Yes, what's the jaw doing? Oh, no, huh, it's just becoming heavy. That's right. Did you notice that I'm allowing the pitch to drop at the end? Why not? Because it's not about the note. It's just so that you have this sense of follow through, if you will. Ah. It's totally fine to do that. Here we go. I'll do first. Ah. You go. So hopefully you're standing up here. So just move your entire body here uh, and make it feel good. Ah, good. Fantastic. Now let go of your abs. I know if you've been singing before, you've been told that you're supposed to do certain things with your stomach and all that kind of stuff. Here's an idea. Let's just let go of that for now. Let's see what happens. Why not? Let your abs go. Move around. Ah, and. you this. How much work was there to sustain the note for that period of time? How much work was there to keep the note on that pitch? How much work was there 
to get the vocal cords to vibrate, to have them connect. Not much, huh? And that's the whole idea. We want to make it as effortless as possible, and it can become much more effortless whatever song you sing, whatever range you're in. We are training those vocal cords to vibrate by themselves, if you will, without the interference of the other muscles. Hmm, how can you still sustain the note and relax in your abs like that? Are we not breathing? Of course we are. We're going to talk about breathing later on, but we are actually encouraging good breathing here because we are moving. So what we are going for right off the bat here is this feeling of release, of the exhaling, letting go, if you will. A lot of singers have been conditioned to control. We've been taught breath control, control the pitch, even control the audience, control my emotion. Oh, we're so much into controlling, aren't we? What if we can just let go of the need to control? Do you know that the need to control really implies the fear of being out of control? Hmm. The need to control really implies something being held because I'm afraid that oh, I can't be out of control. Well, here's the thing. We're going to replace that with trust. I trust that I can be out of control, meaning I allow things to happen, and I'm going to trust that that's going to be very exciting. Whether it is about letting out a sound in a song or communicating with an audience, having a performance, because that's how we create spontaneity, to be alive. Release. Ultimately, it's not about releasing just sound. It's about releasing you, who you really are in that moment. We'll, talk, we'll go there later on. Right now, let's, let's just focus on the physical aspect of it, of it, this kinesthetic awareness that we're developing, which we cannot develop if we're concerned about sound, if we're using our ears to measure if we're doing something good or, good or not, if we're right or wrong, if we're on the pitch or not. You're not going to develop the kinesthetic awareness. We're developing a deeper awareness than you ever have, and you're going to develop deeper and deeper awareness, noticing things. Every time you do it, you're going to notice something new. If you're a seasoned professional, you're going to notice something that you've never noticed before in your career. And that's how you fix a voice problem. That's how you develop that range that we're going to go for in, in the future here. But we need to set the stage here with the mindset the mental attitude, and also the kinesthetic awareness. Does that make sense? So, we don't need to control. We're just letting it out. We're giving permission. That's what we want to do. We give permission for whatever. Isn't that a nice feeling? This is what we need to do, to be creative also. So see this as a creative session when you practice, okay? If you want to pause now, this could be a good time if you just want to let this sink in. Maybe you want to play around with breath, be connected with movement and so forth. You can do that here. If you want to keep going, we'll keep going. All right, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to play five notes. But again, we're not concerned about the notes. We're just going to do ah, right? while I'm playing these five notes. So if I do, ah, it's more of a slide, right? Musical terms we can call like glissando, but I'm not trying to, ah, trying to hit the notes. Make sense? Just try that. I'll play, I'll do first and then you copy. So here we go. Ah, and. Good. Ah. Yes. Release. Ah, let it go. Oh, yeah. Ah, move. Fantastic. What often happens is that someone can do that ah, when I'm not playing piano, and then I suddenly start playing the piano, and the person goes ah. Why is that? Because we're so conditioned to start doing something differently because. The ears are in, to, we're trying to create the result. We're trying to sound in a certain way that we think is good, but it may not be so good, right? The reason you're going to sound better is because your voice is freer. That's what sounds good. 
All right, so now what you're gonna do is to do breathy sound. Can we do that and have the same feeling of release? Ah, and. Good, all right. Now we're gonna go back and forth between breathy and then connected. I'll do first so we get into a groove here. Um, all right, here we go. So I'll do breathy first. Ah, you go. Connected. Good. Ah. Good. Ah. Connected. Ah. Good. Ah. Good. Feel what the difference is. Ah. Heavy tongue. Does the tongue change position just because it's breathy or connected? Hopefully not, because ideally, the tongue is not involved in that process. Easier said than done, uh, of course, but that's the idea. Ah, breathy. to have a similar feeling of release, whether it's breathy or connected. Similar feeling of giving permission, right? But you might experience it differently, like we said before. If you have a tendency that it's a little bit tight, then doing breathy might be tough. <laughs> and it might feel strange, right? And breathy often makes you more tired. So you don't want to do breathy all the time. I'm not going to teach you how to sing breathy, although it can be very, very effective. But in order to sing breathy, you actually need a strong voice. If it's, again, breathy because of habit or because that's how your voice operates, that's probably not a good idea. Again, you're limited. and That shows that there's weakness. We need to get these vocal cords to start vibrating. Okay? So, we're training the surrounding muscles to relax more and more. Let me just address this thing about relaxation because sometimes you see online that Pierre Bristow teaches a relaxed way of singing. Sure, some people say that I teach relaxation. Maybe, but we could also argue that I teach advanced muscle isolation. Because you see, just telling someone to relax is not a helpful instruction. I don't think everyone, anyone has ever relaxed by being told, hey, relax, will you? <laughs> right? So, what is relaxation? Well, the way we're talking about it here is, is an advanced developed skill. How do you um, relax one part and while you're active in another part, in another muscle, right? This is a f important for all physical activity. Athletes playing an instrument, whatever it might be. So as you probably know, I play the violin, right? And in order to move fingers, there's strength involved. But strength where? Now, as a violin player, you want to be able to have a relaxed wrist. But as a beginner player, I can't relax my wrist. Why not? Because the fingers aren't developed. I don't have the muscle strength in the finger. Everybody, every guitar player knows that you start feeling this cramp after a while, right? Piano plays the same thing. You have to learn to move fingers in intricate patterns in order to play an instrument. It's a very much a physical skill. But there's a relaxation to it, but it's relaxation somewhere else. In order to make fingers move effectively and fast, it, ha it can't be a lot of, ex ex you know, this movement. It has to be a really subtle movement in the right spot and relaxation in the other muscles. Same thing with the voice. That's why this training to isolate these muscles is so important. In the next sessions, we're going to go much deeper with, with this. Right? So relaxation, fine, but it's also about developing the skill of, for example, like we're talking about now, 
connecting the cords, making these muscles stronger so they connect with less effort. So if I'm gonna be loud, what does it take? Well, let me try. Okay, so I'm gonna try to be really loud now, and I'm gonna do, here we go, all right. Ah! Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> that didn't feel so good. The question is, was it loud? If I do, ah! The second one is, of course, much, much louder. The first one is, of course, much, much more effort, much more forceful. What does the law of physics say about force? Well, force, you push against something, that something pushes back. There's always a counterforce. We could call that resistance. We could call that tension. And you could hear that. You could see it. You could feel it when I did that. There's resistance even before I start. I'm pushing, I'm forcing it, but the sometime, at the same time, there's so much resistance, very little comes out. It's gonna create this tension. It has this tension and it's gonna hurt my voice. If I don't get much for it, I'm working much, much, much too hard. When I did the second one, ah, I actually went more for that release, right? Relaxation in these muscles. I set the cords in motion and it became more powerful. What if you can be much, much more powerful with less effort? Of course you can. This has implications way beyond singing, by the way, right? Because this idea of forcing something to make something happen, do we want to force our kids? Well, then we meet resistance, right? So we want to be able to influence. We want to be able to empower. You want to be able to have the power to empower an audience, to influence an audience, to create uh, that bond with an audience, to create that um, the vibration in the room, if you will. That is power. It's not force. So let's do a couple more now. And with this in mind, really feel this sense of giving permission to release. However it sounds, we couldn't care less, right? We don't care. We care about what it feels like. Here we go. Uh, let it out. Here we go. is probably a good sign that something that was holding on let go. Uh... that holding back, being afraid, trying to, you know, being careful and cautious, that's also resistance, right? And at the same time, being forceful and being loud and trying to be as loud as possible, that's also forceful. That also creates the resistance, right? So we want to try and feel whatever feels good today. Tomorrow, a week from day, a month from now, it's going to be a totally different experience. But for now, let's go for that feeling, okay? Heavy tongue. Move your neck, move your torso, let go of those abs, and just allow the air to pass, to come out there. Okay, here we go. Uh, here we go. Oh, yes. Fantastic. Uh, good. Allow the pitch to drop at the end. Yes, allow the pitch. Oh. Yes, move. Oh, that's good. 
comes out, comes out. Yes, how does that feel? Hopefully it feels kind of good. Hopefully it feels kind of fun. Just giving yourself permission not have to sound good, that could feel good right away. Did you become tired by doing this? Probably less tired than perhaps in the past when you're trying desperately to hit the notes. Now realize that even though we're being sloppy with pitch and stuff, this is going to give you greater pitch accuracy. How is that possible? Because we're, we are training the vocal cords to vibrate freely. The vocal cords have to vibrate at the same speed to hit the notes. They can't do that if there's a lot of stuff getting in the way. We'll talk more about that later on. Okay? Move. Have fun. Get into this enjoyable feeling. Very, very important. Everything we do later on, you're going to have this feeling. Is this making sense? So now, what are you going to do? You are now going to practice by yourself. What we did here, here may not be a comfortable range for you. Maybe you want to play with a different range in your voice. You can do that when you're by yourself. You don't want to have a track to follow along with, where it's the same tempo, the same everything, uh, every day. You don't want to watch my videos all the time. You're going to get tired of seeing me, <laughs> right? You want to do it by yourself. And that's why these training things can be done without an instrument. Yes, we're going to do uh, things later on. Uh, it has more to do with the musicality of it. But that's not what this is about. Ear training? Yes, absolutely. Go into the singing zone members area. Get involved with ear training. Read the uh, workbook. Right? Where the, some more insights into this. Practice breathy connected. What's the difference? Ah, 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 ah. Is it the tongue that does it? Does it have to be a lot of muscle effort to connect the chords? Play around with that. There's no right or wrong. It's just exploration discovery process. Slide. Ah. Ah, no specific scale, but it's still developing the functionality of the vocal cords and all these other things, letting those surrounding muscles go, right? You can do it on a pitch if you want. Ah, are you absolutely accurately on the pitch? Doesn't matter, right? But being on pitch then encourage you to feel this flow that you're not holding. You're not con trying to control. Uh, I'm still exhaling, I'm releasing, right? I'm letting it go, letting it fly. Make sense? And then move around. Always movement, make it feel good, okay? Can you play around with this a little bit? And then we'll move on to the next session, all right? Okay, have fun with that. I'll see you in the next one.